Here is um, Mike Pence. He's um, in Ireland. I'm not sure what the agenda is there. Um, It's basically for him to maybe show that he's, uh, you know, stately and in the event that something happens to the president, he's definitely got the bona fides to step in. Um, He is staying at a Trump resort (laughs) while he's there, of course. Oh, is he? I didn't know. Oh, gosh. And now, look, do I know if uh, Trump wants that million dollars, probably a couple million dollars that gets paid to that resort for all the people staying there and take over? Maybe it's, I don't know, five, ten million dollars. Who knows how much it is? Two? I don't know. Um, Donald Trump, uh, it's reported that his Doral golf club is doing horribly because Donald Trump is odious and it's hard for people to ignore that. And so they stay away from his places unless they want something from our government, which is, a, you know, I hope people understand that that's a problematic dynamic. Um, so Mike Pence is staying at uh, the uh, Trump uh, resort or whatever it is uh, while he's in Ireland, of course. Uh, Trump is uh, double dipping here, getting that uh, paid for that and hoping, I imagine, that this helps from a marketing perspective. Right. So uh, good for the press. I think this is... Um, Costas, Robert Costas, I think. I can just tell from the voice, I think. But I'm not 100% sure about this. Who is asking um, Mike Pence a question about the propriety of of doing something like this. Staying at the a resort owned by the president. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Just to give you a chance to respond. Democrats have criticized you today for staying at the Trump property in Dunebeg. They say you're enriching the president. What's your response to that criticism? It's wonderful to be back in Ireland. (laughs) For many reasons. Ireland is so important to the United States of America as a trading partner. But in so many ways, for more than 30 million Americans, Ireland is family. And I'm one of them. I mean, it's deeply humbling for me to be able to come back to Ireland and have the opportunity to go to the very hometown of my mother's grandmother. I mean, we'll, we'll have dinner tonight at a little pub that I worked at when I was 22 years old when I came over here shortly after my grandfather passed away. And right across the street is the house where my great-grandmother grew up. She often spoke of the castle that was out of the window of her bedroom. And uh, to be able to be here, uh, to be able to reaffirm our commitment to the Republic of Ireland, to all of our economic ties, our diplomatic ties, but at the same time, to have an opportunity to, to uh, connect to the roots of my family, I think supports the relationship between the United States and Ireland. I mean, if you think about, if you think about the bonds that exist between the Irish people and the American people, they have much to do with shared heritage, they have much to do with family. And that's why it was important for me. Before our original trip plan, uh, to at least spend one night in Dunebeg. And, I, and uh, I, I understand political attacks by Democrats, but um, um, if you have a chance to get to Dunebeg, you'll find it's a fairly small place. Uh, and uh, the opportunity to stay at Trump National in Dunebeg to accommodate the unique footprint uh, that comes with our security detail and other personnel. Uh, made it logical. We checked it with the State yep. Department. Uh, they Tony approved logic. us staying there. Logic. And I was, uh, I was pleased to have the opportunity to return to that family hometown right, man, shut up. and can. to be able to stay there. Uh, and um, and not just on a personal level, but also to do it do it in a way that uh, uh, helps me celebrate with the people of Ireland. Yeah, a lot of gay guys who ate so potatoes. Tens That's your family. Americans no one cares. Feel to the Emerald Isle. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Wow! The music hit it perfectly. <laughs> wow. Um, you know, like, ha- like, like, he paused at first, and then he just went into that, and then you could almost see behind his eyes, like, I can't believe I figured this out. I can't believe I'm going to get away with this. And um, Mike Pence, I mean, yes, he, he may be a little bit dim, 
Um, he may be an incompetent executive based upon his uh, time as governor, where he was really loathed by 60% of the population, I think, in that I, state. It sounded like his political career was coming to an end. His career, like political Myers, career was, like, yeah. Uh, yep. And, um, but this guy can lie like... You know, like I would put him up with any type of pathological liar. Um, the thing about Mike, is but that God but I will say, like and the only thing that is making him a pathological liar, I think, is just that um, he has a real concerted purpose when he lies. Um, and uh, but he can lie, boy, that guy can really just sit there with a straight face and uh, and, and deliver those lines. That's that is quite a talent and uh all his god and all our gods and our non-gods help us if he ever gets uh into a position where he could be president for god's sakes um it's gonna do stay in limerick there you go. <laughs> i wanted to go there for one night <laughs>